What's going on guys? It's Ozzy from OzX Hardware and a little over a week ago I reviewed the Ryzen 5 3500X. It's a Chinese exclusive that's priced pretty aggressively against the Intel i5-9400F and has similar performance. But after reviewing that, I kind of thought to myself, why aren't there any ultra budget Zen 2 processors? Like we have the Ryzen 5 3400G and the Ryzen 3 3200G and they're solid but they're not using AMD's latest architecture. So they're lagging behind other Ryzen 3000 processors like the 3500X and basically everything above that. The question I'd like to answer today is what can we expect from AMD's next offering of ultra budget processors, the 4000 series? I did some testing and the findings are pretty exciting. So let's dive into it. What's going on guys, Future Ozzy here. I'll be super quick, but tentatively on November 21st, I'm going to be doing a charity live stream for a nonprofit, Shellback Tech. Shellback Tech is run by this awesome guy named Travis. And what he does is he builds computers for veterans that are out of commission. And it's just a really awesome concept that allows people who suffer with PTSD or anxiety or anything to just find their getaway in playing games on computers. So we're gonna have games, we're gonna have giveaways, we're gonna do a lot of things. You'll see me doing stupid stuff that I've never done on camera before, but we'll also just have chats, we'll build computers, whatever. So it's gonna be streamed on YouTube and Twitch. Make sure you guys are following me there on both at OzTalksHW. And yeah, hopefully I'll see you guys on Saturday, November 21st. That's it, back to the video. Now, first things first, we gotta make a few assumptions on what we can expect specification-wise from the future Ryzen 4000 budget processors. Now, some of these assumptions are more scientific than others, but just bear with me. This is really all just for science and a little bit of fun. If we look at the Athlon 200GE, we see that it's only two cores and four threads, so that's a safe minimum. I highly, highly doubt AMD will ever regress performance. Now, the maximum number of threads and cores is a little bit more interesting. I initially thought it was only gonna be four cores and four threads, but after seeing the leaks of Intel's 10th generation of Core i processors, I decided to rethink that. It looks like Intel is gonna make a Core i3 that's four cores and eight threads for around $120, which is a pretty solid offering. Now, I highly doubt that AMD is going to sit back and let Intel just completely demolish them in the budget market. So I think four cores and eight threads is a safe assumption for next generation. But just in case, I'll also have a simulation with only four cores and four threads. Predicting the clock speed, the cache size, and other minute details is basically impossible without some kind of leak or official info from AMD or one of their foundry partners. Now, I don't have that kind of clearance, but AMD, if you're watching this, like, slide in my DMs. So we'll need to make a few more assumptions. AMD doubled their cache size going from the Zen Plus chips to the Zen 2 chips, so we can assume it's probably gonna happen for the budget processors as well. Price is one of the easier ones to hypothesize, and I doubt AMD is going to change the MSRP considering that competition is so strict right now. So for the slower model, the 200GE replacement, around $59.99 is what I would assume. And then for the faster model, the 3200G replacement, probably somewhere in the 99.99 range. As far as nomenclature goes, AMD has a bad rep for GPU nomenclature, but their CPUs are pretty standard across the board. So for now, we're just going to call the slower replacement, the 200GE replacement, the Athlon 400GE, and then we're gonna call the faster replacement, the 3200GE's uh, successor, the 4200G. Now again, before I go into the benchmarks, these are just all assumptions that I've kind of made based on previous history. If you guys think that some of these are wrong, let me know in the comments below how that would change. But I think these are pretty solid and things that we can most likely predict are gonna happen. Now with all of that being said, I'm using the Ryzen 5 3600 as my testing dummy. Unfortunately, it's not the best and there isn't a perfect candidate anywhere. All of the current Ryzen 3000 CPUs that use Zen 2 have too much L3 cache or their frequencies are too high or a combination of both. So there really isn't a cookie cutter way to make the simulation perfect, but that's the best we can do. The rest of the specifications are an RTX 2060 and I specifically use this card because I know that you're probably not gonna go much beyond this for a budget processor. I also have the MSI B450 Tomahawk. We have a one terabyte Hynix SSD, and we have 16 gigs of DDR4 3200 memory in dual channel with a cast latency of 16. So I'll let the benchmark roll, but I do wanna highlight a few spots. Take a look at the Cinebench multi-threaded score of the hyper-threaded dual core. It's as fast as a first generation Ryzen quad core processor, which is insane progress. There's also a very obvious bottleneck on the hyper-threaded dual core in 
basically every game tested and a milder one, but still noticeable on the quad core with four threads. In most of the titles, the hyper-threaded quad core keeps up with the 3500X and the 9500F for presumably a fraction of the cost. Now what I really want to highlight here is the value of these processors. If AMD releases a hyper-threaded quad-core for $99, basically $100, every frame you render will cost you $0.65. Cents. Even if they just release a quad-core for $99.99, it's still wonderful value. If the 400GE becomes a quad-core, then you're looking at $0.41 cents a frame. That's more than double the value of the 3500X and the 9500F, which were already solid offerings from both teams. Now again, these are all under the pretense that my assumptions are true. I don't think all of them are, but even if the majority are, then we're looking at some pretty awesome offerings from AMD coming up soon. Now keep in mind that these processors were all simulated from a Ryzen 5 3600, which has 32 megabytes of L3 cache and pretty high clock speeds. Lower performance is expected. I'm probably assuming about five to 7% lower performance in games. But even then, if the prices stay the same, still really, really good. So something else that I would like to add is that apparently AMD has made up to or more than an 8% IPC increase going from Zen 2 to whatever their next processor refinement is gonna be called, their microarchitecture. If AMD decides to skip Zen 2 for these budget processors and go straight to Zen 2 Plus or Zen 3, then that 8% increase could be a big game changer. Personally, I'm gonna take that 8% with a grain of salt. Going from Zen to Zen Plus was only about three to 4%, so I'm gonna assume the same and be pleasantly surprised if it's more than that. My question for you guys is, what are your thoughts on the next generation of budget processors? Are you excited? Do you think that these predictions are accurate? Are you gonna buy one if that's the case? Let me know what you guys think below. It's really exciting again, just to know that like the people who can't afford the high-end stuff aren't getting left in the dust. I feel like that has been the case before. If you guys like this video, then leave a like, share it. Make sure you follow me on socials at AustalksHW on pretty much every social that you can find. You'll find me there. Uh, I try to update everything as soon as I can. And also, save the, save the date. I think it's November 21st is going to be the live stream. I'll have the date and all the information up here uh, for charity. If you guys want to help support that, then follow me on Twitch right now so you can uh, be updated. Make sure you follow me here. And I'll be posting more information as time draws near. So, look forward to that and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.